All right, welcome to part three of the EP3 K24 build with the five lug. So you saw episode two, I'm not gonna recap it because actually we just filmed episode two, so for us it's seamless. So the header had to be modified. George modified the header, he's putting it on right now and you can't tell, but his fingers are crossed, but it fits. But of course the K24 changes the deck height and a little bit of tweaking on the tubes. Fingers crossed, it is good. The five lug is done on the front. Both sides are done, we just got to bleed. The back is loose. Jeff has actually been working with us. He has got these loose calipers are off. We got to pull those hubs. Uh, still got to, let's see, what's the checklist? We're going to go write it down. We still need to put a fuel pump in the car. It's going to have the TSX injector, so we should have enough fuel. And then with a fuel pump, we'll have more than enough fuel for what we're doing. The airbox doesn't fit, so we're going to be building an intake for it to make it work. The exhaust is pretty tiny, but we're not looking for a ton of power. We're just looking for it to work. It's and of tiny, course it's gonna be quiet. It works, it does the job. The air will come out the back. It's not the size that matters. Yeah, so it's, it's gonna be a, itself. this is gonna be like an exper experiment for us. So you never know, it might make 200 with that exhaust. If not, I'm sure Jeff has already got plans of. A twin loop. Yeah, he's already got ideas of it. He's not even thinking about this. He just make it run and get it down the road. So this is how you do an oil change when somebody else is doing the suspension. You get out the oil change ladder. You gotta stay busy. Well, that's it. So I'm using my one dirty glove to work on the suspension back here. Front is done, working on the back, trying to break this ball joint, not ball joint, uh, alignment bolt loose right here. When the camera focuses, I've already put penetrating oil in there. It's not wanting to move. That one's broke loose. That one's broke loose. Um, do the same thing on this. I'm going to go ahead and douse it some more. I've already wet it there. We found out we can actually remove this dust cover, take the nut off there. This whole piece slides off. It couldn't be, it couldn't be any easier. T37s and four lug twos. Nobody's going to Nobody's going to realize. How much space. money are you going to save on lug nuts? That's true. I mean, that's like 10% off. <laughs> That. Five lug. five lug held on with one nut. It couldn't get any easier. So we'll do the same on the car. We're going to take that off, take this piece off, slide it on. Do make sure you use the dust cover from the RSX. It's bigger. The old one nut five lug for. That's it. If you say, hey, do you want to stop by while we're working on your car, and then it'll it'll get involved. That's part of the fun, though, isn't it, Jeff? Exactly. It's better than staying at home watching a movie. Gotta take tomorrow off now. <laughs> well, it could be an all-nighter. We're not even done yet. We gotta bleed the brakes, gotta hook the brakes back up. We have to build an intake. Uh, you've gotta figure out how the fuel pump goes in that car, Jeff. You have done one before? Some gas smelling. I've done in the EG and the Integras, not in the EP. Yet. Oh yeah, you'll love this one. And of course you're gonna need gas, because what George didn't tell you is he siphoned the gas out before uh -huh. he sold it to you. <laughs> He left it absolutely dry, so we're gonna need some fresh 93. Now there's something about doing an engine swap that makes the shop just as messy as can be. Look at this. It's like every tool you own is out, including a box full of spare bolts, a dolly, some pads, another motor. Where the motor was coming from. I know, it's just amazing how messy and dirty the shop gets. What they should do is put a drain plug in this here. Yeah, so when you fill that full of fluid, you can drain it too. Yeah, you do an oil change, that's what these holes are for. So when you change the oil, it fills this frame up and it distributes the oil evenly through your driveway. I'm sure any of the viewers with EP3s, RSXs, 8th Gen Civics, they all understand that oil filter drains on everything. Yeah. Fills what? up the subframe, lubes the axle. Yeah, it drips for three or four days. For three or four days you're convinced that you've got an oil leak and it's not, it's just dripping off. You just wait for everything to dry off. Watch that thing fire out your fingers. That has done that to me so many times. Now it's down to a fingernail and you polish your finger. Yeah. That thing fired across the room again on the other day. You're polishing it, next minute, pew, it's done. See you in uh, about two hours.
You know, it would really suck if that didn't fit. <laughs> that color is amazing. That is it. Is it pushed on all the way or is it just not seated? Oh, okay, it's, uh, it's hub centric. It's got to push on tighter. Yeah, yeah. It's got, it's got hub so yeah. Nice yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so there's not a lot of lug, a lug thread there, but it's still got to go on all the way. Yeah, that color combo is perfect. All right, brake fluid. We also did clutch fluid. Um, coolant is going in right now. I see it is glugging down. Uh, battery's connected. Uh, throttle kill, we're going to work on that. We're not going to hook this up right now. We're just going to start the engine, make sure everything is good. Of course, the fuel pump hasn't been done. Uh, everything else is looking good. Uh, we're going to build... Uh, we'll talk about that later. There's the intake. Look how nice the intake looks. Look at that. Got the gang knife. What are you going to do? You cut this thing Stab off. It's not going to use it anymore. Oh no. Yeah, we've got plans for that, don't we? Yep. So if anybody's in the market for some four lug, if you are seriously tired of your five lug and you want to drop down to four lug, so every mount was gone. This is the notorious mount that always breaks. This is like the EK mount that I think they came broke from the factory that was so fragile. The factory mounts, that was the front one. That's broke too. Uh, this is the rear mount. Uh, this one doesn't look real clever either. So everything's fresh now. All the mounts are nice. Has sport mounts. Now don't forget your stickers, Jeff. Put those with the brakes. Absolutely. Is that what this piece is called? This is called a normal Honda tie adapter. Yeah. So somebody mentioned this. Hey guys, what are you going to do about your battery tie? Oh, um, come on, that looks awful, guys. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Don't look at everything else. Just look at that. So this was part of a, another gift for Jeff. This is our LHT battery tie. Let's see if it runs. So who's going to do the honors? You want George to do it? Well, in case it goes wrong, he can shut it off real quick. And we'll blame him for it. All right, George, you know what to do. All right, George, start her up. I'm getting it's like a familiar place, right? One last time. George gets to start it one last time. All right, fingers crossed, Jeff. If it doesn't run, we're gonna ask you what you did wrong. <laughs> All right, just wait. Let me just check for fuel leaks. Now we're still running on the factory pump. We haven't changed that yet because obviously we want to hear it run. No, nope, everything's good. I don't see anything or smell anything funny. Ready? Yep. The battery sounds a little weak. The battery sounds a little weak, doesn't it? The battery light's on too. It is? Yeah. Um, did we plug it in? Yeah. That is your alternator too, right? That's strange. Uh, that is a plug right there. You see that? It's not snapped in all the way. It's pushed together all the way now. I was just checking that LHC put out a YouTube video. They did? Yeah. Which one is it? It's the about NSX, video? no. Oh, it's the NSX, NSX yeah. video. I haven't seen that AP3 video yet. Haven't. You want to start it? See if that light went off. That plug wasn't snapped all the way together. It was pushed together, but it wasn't clicked. So hopefully that light goes off. Yeah, right out. Look at that. It just shows that those wires really need to be pushed together. Sweet. All lights went over. How's the throttle feel? What? That sounds perfect. <laughs> Beautiful. We can put it here. That works. Nice. All right. What do you think, Jeff? Sigh relief? All set. <laughs> Ready to tune. All right. Fuel pump. It doesn't seem any different here. It doesn't? Well, I mean, it's essentially the same motor, it's just a little bit bigger. How's the vibration? Does it feel smooth? Oh, it's good right now. Is it? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's perfect, isn't it? You gotta wait for the idle to come down, it might get a little more aggressive, but... Yeah, these are the, uh, 60? 62s? Yeah. yeah. Wow. 
It's very subtle. Post it on Instagram. Post it on Instagram? Yeah. Hit the horn. <laughs> you like that? Be on the video. <laughs> My Bluetooth's actually off right now. It is. Uh, the tune that is in it right now is for the EP3, but because the injectors are a little bit larger on the TSX, and it's pretty close to how much larger the engine is. Where's our fuel trims? 0.7. That's just pretty close, isn't it? That was just a calculated guess, because obviously the engine's a little bit larger with larger injectors, and let's see. Let's see that. pretty close. So remember earlier we took the TPS sensor off the EP3 throttle body and I did put the slots in the screws. Well we have to adjust that. I just kind of put that on and guessed it and of course if you check it it's right but if you don't check it it's way way off. Um, wow look how close that is. Zero and it's blipping at five, uh, 0.5. Could get much closer than that, could you? No, that's that's good enough. All right, let me you lock it, it down. down, didn't you? Or did you wait I just that? locked. I just tightened it. You do, you know, with the with the uh, idea that I was going to take it off, so it really needs to be snugged down. It'll come loose with vibration. So there you go. If you check it, your TPS voltage is right. If you don't check it, it's way off. All right, because he had four lug before, that means he's missing exactly one lug nut per wheel. So we have some skunk two lugs. I want to donate to the cause right here that is just amazing wheel the bronze of the black really really stands out how's it look? looks like it's got a little settling yeah a little settling in the back Yeah, look at the uh, alignment. So, I want to jack it up and I'll pull that camera bolt out. Uh, it has camera adjustment on the bolt, and then of course on the Skunk 2 pillar here. So, because it's cambered in, it's actually towing into, I think it looks the same on the other side. It's not as bad, but you see, yeah it is. Yeah, it's towing in there. Oh, that's easy enough, isn't it? It's not too bad. That's if it is under there. <laughs> if it's not, it's just like a sending you that fuel pump somewhere else. I've done these before, but it's years. I don't remember, so I got the car jacked up. I want to take the wheels off and do a alignment. All right, so this is the sending unit out of the EP3. It's kind of weird. It's got this big contraption here, but the fuel pump is housed in there. There is a little regulator for the return. So we're going to get that thing apart and replace the fuel pump we're going to put a walbro 255 in there so we have plenty of fuel for this car and this engine and whatever he does in the future that fuel pump will be adequate all right so this is the pump that came out of it this is a, a big contraption that holds this this is our typical walbro 265s that we're using a lot but because this fits in this cage it's kind of a whole weird system this all clips together and it has to be precise because this has to clip in here then it has to fit in this guy over here so obviously that's too long this is a DW65 it's a 265 liter an hour by Deechworks we use these in our Civic kits as you see that is the identical size it actually flows a little bit more than the Walbro only by a little bit but as you see the size is absolutely perfect so that is the pump we're going to use so we've shown this on the channel before but this is what we use to take the fuel pump out i think i made this about 62 years ago was it 62? Well, it feels like I it. I feel like the first insight you did was like 63 years ago. Yeah, it was actually before the one. It was actually before I was born I built the first insight. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, we actually have this, and then we lost it. And then after hours of looking, we couldn't find it. George made another one. Now we can't find the one that George made, but we did find the original. So, at least we have one. So, next time we start it up, not only will we have a uh, 
a higher volume fuel pump, we'll have a throttle pedal. Yeah, I won't have to make mouth noises. That'll be nice. That'll make much more power on the dyno with that throttle cable hooked up. Um, we'll double check this, it sucked down all the coolant, we'll check it again. Uh, we didn't run it long enough to get heat, but it's probably pretty close. It's 11.38 p.m. There we go, 11.38 p.m. Bracket is going on now, so we'll be able to rev it up. Uh, it's a little wet out there, but Jeff, you got to take it for a quick drive before it's done. Obviously, it's not tuned, so you can't go beating on it and going crazy, but at least you can just, you know, got to see it move. Uh, fuel pump's in, back seat is in. Uh, still on the tune, or the base tune, it's still got... It's actually got 87 octane in it, don't it, George? Yeah. Okay, so we're not going to go crazy with it, because we really want to put 93 in and uh, tune it, but we just want to see it move with the motor in. We've been working hard on this thing. But it's kind of the, it's kind of the, uh, I don't know what I'm saying, it's suddenly. It's kind of like 11.30 at night. So yeah, all right, we're going to take the EP3 out for a quick ride. Uh, Jeff is going to move the Integra and we're going to get the first chance of seeing the EP3 move. Yep, it is dark out here, it's been raining, the Integra has been sitting out here. Are. It is dark out here. It's still kind of warm. It's yeah. cool, but it's nice. It cooled down enough. All right, so let's see. The official time of the EP3 moving <laughs> is 11:49. Jeffrey's reluctantly gonna drive it. There's no gas in it. We don't have a very good alignment on it. Sounds like the front seat into the back seat. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was in it last. He shouldn't have adjusted the seat that much. He put all that in the fuel pump. Oh, that's right. Okay. Uh oh. It doesn't run anymore. Uh oh. I know I plugged the fuel pump in. All right. It's now 12 25. It's actually December 13th, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Dad. Yeah. It's uh, 12 days till Christmas. And uh, hopefully the. Uh, Car starts this time. I'm not going to tell you what uh, what went wrong, but that makes a big difference. So a tiny boo boo on the fuel pump. Um, one of the O rings that um, ah, it don't really matter. We fixed it. The gas pedal works. Will Detech even monitor 2200 on this? I don't know, probably not. That's what it said. Yeah, the VTEC map is set to come on at 2200. The EP3. So if it does go into VTEC at 2200, it'll sound really weird. Well, again, we're not doing any showing off or we just want to see it move. We've been working on it all this time. It's 1230. We want to see it work. Alignment's off. You can see the here the tires. Alignment's definitely off. These are very sensitive, sensitive to uh, alignments. Everything good? No warning lights or anything? No, the suspension feels real funny. Yeah, it's all over it's the place. All off the front. We've pulled the suspension out, but... Yeah, but it feels like... Th this front tire is... is man, it's still, it, just, it needs to go back for an alignment again. Oh, it moves. Alright, that's a good sign, right? Give it a rev, Jeff. It's super quiet. Yeah, it's super quiet from back there. All right. All right, so it's going to need uh, dyno in and alignment and then cleaning. Get all of our finger marks off it. All right, fellas. The official time is 12.30 a.m. All right, so this is it. We're going to go home. It's 12.45 uh, a.m which means it's tomorrow, which means we need to get back here soon. Yeah, the S2000 will be here soon. Yeah, there is an S2000 coming in. We're gonna uh, do another quickie alignment on this because it's alignment's really sensitive on these cars. Um, dyno it, charge the air conditioning, uh, put some fresh 93 in there and that's it. The car will be done. So we'll see you real soon. We're gonna see you in literally seconds because you're gonna see it on the dyno. Yeah, exactly. All right, so we've got the EP3 on the dyno. I will tell you that the factory map, even though it started and the, tr and the 
the trims were fairly close, it didn't want to run on that map. The EP3 has a VTEC engagement point of 2200 RPMs and the TSX motor didn't like it at all. I just went to the gas station and filled it up with some fresh 93. So changed the map, now it has a factory TSX map in there that we can kind of tweak from, but the map is a map I've used. It's not a factory map, it's actually a, a tuned map I've used are tuned and it's, uh, it's pretty close so we'll see we're gonna get it strapped down bring it up to temperature and do a full pull and we'll see how close that map really is all right so this is the dyno from when the car was up here before with the stock k20 144.9 and 133 torque which is actually pretty pretty good for that motor considering it came with 160 at the crank so we'll see what this is going to do we'll do a light pull first just to make sure everything is safe before we start going crazy just make sure the uh, air fuels are on track and make sure we don't have any knock or any problems it does have a fresh tank of 93 now again this is a bone stock 2008 tsx motor the other thing we've done is an intake and of course the modified jackson header it is going into the factory ep3 exhaust which is tiny give you an idea of this exhaust diameter if I go like this, and I put my thumb and pinky around there, I can touch, look at that. Alright, so our peak torque is at 25 to 3,000 RPM, we got 157. Uh, we're making 182 because it's falling off on top. You see the torque over here? Right at this point, it just falls. I mean, it drops, drops 30 foot pounds. It's making 160 here and 122 here. So the exhaust is holding us back. We have to pull a whole bunch of fuel to stop it running. Dead ridge, it was running. And, and a half to one up here so we have to pull fuel out to get it back on our 12 12 2 line so right about here is is starts falling off right about 58 to 6. all right so we dropped the exhaust we're going to see how much restriction that is so get ready to plug your ears So that's what the exhaust is worth. That's dropping the exhaust through the Jackson header, and it's not the biggest header, but look at the gains. Now the torque is holding longer. All right, so car is ready. We're gonna deliver it here. Jeff asked us to drive it, just verify everything is good. It's gonna need an alignment, but we adjusted it and got it a little bit closer. I mean, it feels like a factory car in here. Got the air conditioning working and everything's good he was the last owner so uh, we're up to temperature uh, let's just run out down the street make sure it works and see if it feels like it used to you're somewhat familiar with this car the alignment is better but it's still you know so so yeah these it's, things are super sensitive to alignment changes yeah and i did just a guess alignment by putting it in the shop and kind of just eyeballing it so it goes down the road, it's not as bad as what it was when he took it out that 12.30 at night and it squealed the tires. Yeah. I know he didn't like driving it because it just felt funky. But let's run up the road, we'll make sure it drives good. Kind of sounds the same from this side of the car anyway. Yeah, it's just a little more, you know, it got the little bit of vibrations in the mount, so it's the only yeah. difference. Yeah. It's got to feel more positive too because those mounts were all broken. Yeah. That's Esther going up there. Look, look at her. She was gunning it too. She was. She you, hear the, you hear the new tip on her car. It's bouncing around back there. I don't know. I think, oh, Jeff put the airbox back there. Oh, okay. Okay, but hear this thing. Oh, it's nice, isn't it? Yeah, that's the loudest thing on the car. It's 
tires are a little bit louder too. Yeah, they're. These are an aggressive tire he's got on here. If any of you remember the K Site Road, this is where I took Esther for a ride up here in the 500 horsepower K Site and went over these real road tracks and the thing got sideways and it made good for video but a little bit hair raising too. Mainly for Esther because she was sitting in the passenger side. I'm just going to go and U turn on this road. Yeah, this is the road that we took uh, Bjorn. Yeah. He went around here in his Civic to testing out the suspension doing 40 miles an hour. Oh, yeah, that airbox is annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Ready to take that thing out, put it in the bin. There was something else I threw back there when I saw I opened the trunk and saw the airbox and I threw a couple of other things back there. Yeah, let's see if we can relocate that. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's annoying. Alright, so that's where the airbox is gonna sit for right now. It'll make for a little bit quieter of a ride. It's essentially like driving it a week ago, right? Yeah. Actually it's not even a week, it's like days. Definitely feels different on this side of the car. It didn't do that before. <laughs> it's nice having that VTEC sound as well. So we'll go for a quick drive and we'll talk about what he has planned next. So it's noisy. It's windy today, so hopefully I can get some uh, decent sound clip of it going by. It's really quiet, and to be honest, you can kind of feel it lay over. You know, that small exhaust is really choking it. Well, sitting on the passenger side, it feels better, but you can feel it lay over. I like six grand. Here we go. Oh, you definitely hear a VTEC now. It didn't do that before. It's all intake noise. There's no exhaust noise at all. It's intake and tires. That's all you can hear on this car. I feel like I just did this video like two weeks ago while you drove up and I yeah, filmed exactly. you. Yeah, exactly. Except now it makes me check. Yeah, now it. That's all you can hear is the intake. Yeah. You don't hear anything else except intake noise. All right, so we'll talk about stage two. Let's put this thing away, let's call Jeff, and let's get moving on the next one. Hey Siri, text Jeff Cell. Hey, your car is ready, buddy, comma, come and get it. Your message to Jeff Cell says, hey, your car is ready, buddy, come and get it. <laughs> 